Welcome to the RF Elements Unlicensed Podcast. As always, I'm Caleb. We're over here with Tyson. Say hi, Tyson. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hi, Tyson. How are you? So, good, good. This, this week, we're going to be talking about Wispa America 2023, Louisville, Kentucky. We just finished that show up here shortly. Uh, the general state of the market and whatever we feel like rambling on, because this is already on podcast and we say all we want. So, uh, but first, before we get into that, uh, Tyson, give the good people out there their call to action. Yeah, don't forget to like, listen, and subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube or anywhere you download your audio podcasts like Apple, Google, or Spotify. Sit in the music intro. All right, guys, so we just got recently back from the Wisp America 2023 uh, trade show. You know, one of many that we've been to, so... Um, I don't collect badges. I know a lot of people do. I think like five years ago, I was like, I should probably start doing this and never got around to it. Not me. I don't, I don't, I don't collect badges. There's no badges here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Stinking badges. So, uh, show was held in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, you know, good show. Typical turnout. I think maybe a little bit lower. I don't know. Kind of what do you, what do you, what are your thoughts and feelings about this here show? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was different, uh, to say, I mean, it wasn't like it was underserved or anything like that. Over 1200 people, which for a, you know, Wisp America show is actually quite, quite a good attendance. Right. So can't really complain about that, but yeah, it, something seemed a little off. I mean, like the flow, uh, at, at least through the exhibit center, right. was uh, a little slow, um, you know, we didn't see really anybody's, uh, booth, not just our booth, like get like totally swamped and packed, you know, with at least once a day. Right. So it was a constant flow of people coming through, but, uh, it seemed, it seemed to be a, a little bit more mellow. I mean, almost like the market is right now, right. It seems that the market's just kind of deflated a little bit, uh, uncertainty things going on and what's next. And, and I think it showed kind of in the, you know, I guess that the physical, you know, affirmation of how people were at this show as well you know yeah for sure it definitely had that vibe where everyone's like hey you saw everybody you know we got to meet some new people and that was great and you know have those conversations but you know for the most part once everyone got past the you know catching up what's up bro i was having i hadn't seen you a bit and then everyone's like how's it going and everyone's like yeah we're just waiting <laughs> we're here and we're waiting for six gig or the the amc for the six gig and this radio and that radio and the next new big thing coming around the curve and yeah, I think a lot of that energy is really just kind of showing up across the the market in general, right? And that's a little bit what we want to talk about today is the, you know, the six gig hopes, dreams, unicorn tears, and all that other sort of stuff, rainbows and unicorns. You know, that's we we talked about this in previous shows. Like, hey guys, uh, this is definitely coming, and it's going to be great when it does. But you know, there's still a lot of time between here and then. I mean, we talked about we started talking about this when we started the podcast a year ago, and it was yep. going to be hey into this year the Hey, into Q1, 23, Q2, like we're Q3 now, maybe. I mean, who really knows, right? So, yeah. uh, and the radios and stuff are just aren't quite there. I mean, you know, definitely Cambium, I think, has made the most progress. You know, there's a lot of people out there testing the platform now, working at the kinks. Uh, their five gig versions uh, test units are about to drop, as I understand. So, but, you know, from Big U, Ubiquity, nobody knows, man. It's crickets on that side. Not, Not exactly. <laughs> Not exactly surprising there, but at the same time, I was like, hey, guys, you, uh, you gonna do anything? Just kind of poke, poke, hey, hey, <laughs> anything, but So, you know, we're kind of waiting on that. You know, the Mimosa product's kind of out there and testing, uh, but there are some shenanigans afoot over there. So that news came out, you know, during yeah. the show that um, Mimosa has now sold. So Airspan sold Mimosa, which, poor... Poor guys at Mimosa, they seem to kind of get rocked with uh, these announcements during the show. Like when Airspan bought them, uh, was last year was a big kerfuffle about the Quarantena setup and everything. And then now this year, while they're setting up the booth, they're like, oh, hey guys, uh, we're being sold. So awesome. So we got good friends over there and it's just kind of tough to see that happen. But, you know, we'll see how this pans out. Right now, it seems like there's not a lot going on. You know, everything will be status quo for a while, but, you know, kind of makes you wonder, you know, where are things going and. I mean, I don't know. There's, there's been a lot of promises from that side as well that, you know, and this is something you've uh, spoken to with a bit of um, feeling behind <laughs> it, I guess, you know, where yeah. that whole thing's gone. I don't know if we want to hash that out here or not, but. I, I don't care. Why not? I mean, I have opinions, so I'll, I openly really? share them. I and hadn't not noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it it's kind of frustrating, right? Because, you know, <clears throat> where the market's going, 
uh, you know, uh, it is heavily dependent, obviously, on what the equipment manufacturers put out. And then, you know, if we if we look at all the sort of speak, quote unquote, major players in this space, you know, um, there's a lot of stagnant stuff. There's still a lot of, uh, you know, uncertainty. There's there's a lot of uh, really guessing. I mean, let's let's start with ubiquity, right? Where the hell are you? You know, where is ubiquity? They are nowhere to be found. And, and I don't expect to hear anything from them anytime soon, actually. I had a feeling at one point they might do something, um, but it's really starting to seem like, you know, they won't do anything. I, you know, my belief is that they'll probably wait till six gig is actually a thing. The AFC is done. And if you're lucky, you'll probably get uh, a rocket LTU type two by two device that just works in six gig and does maybe your basic AX stuff. I mean, I want to be wrong. I honestly do. I want to see something more come, but I mean, that's, that's it. And I think the most frustrating part about that is, I mean, it, it is, it's ubiquity's decision. It's their market to play in, their company to run, do it the way you want. Um, but it's really, you know, somewhat of the, the user base still hoping and waiting and praying that, you know, you know, the powers over there will actually do something. And uh, I, I don't see it happening uh, anytime soon, uh, probably next year if we see anything. And again, that's just my kind of basic prediction. Who knows, right? Please yeah. prove me wrong. You know? I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, as much guff as we threw that way, we understand that, you know, what they've done for the marketplace is, or for the market in general has been tremendous, right? Yeah. And there's, yeah. there's a lot that rolls with that. But yeah, like so, six, eight months ago, they're like, oh, here's an AX light beam. So everyone's like, sweet, you know. Oh, it's coming. Then, it's coming. Yeah. We'll get us a rocket. We're going to have a six gig version. We're going to be rocking and rolling. And it's been crickets. And like, they refer to some future AP with a compatibility. But it's like, dude, like, where is it? You know, there's some yeah. some hits. There's some uh, kind of knockoff hardware that, that they may have made that, you know, would indicate what their ideas might be. But then it's like just absolute crickets. We're not even getting like the, the, the vibe checks from the people that are normally sort of in the know back there. Yeah, right? you know, exactly. They're, they're test users and they're like, oh, yeah, man, it's going to rock. I mean, the LTU stuff for the longest time, everyone's like, man, you're going to be really excited, whatever, when this stuff rolls. And there's just none of that background chatter I'm hearing. So I don't know if they got voted out of the Cool Kids Club. I don't know if, you know, they, they're they hammered down with paperwork and can't say a thing. It's really hard to say. But hopefully, yeah. you know, here in the near term, we get a 5 gig version, we get a 6 gig version, and will lead to, like, a clear vision as to what they're doing. Again, this this plays all into the hesitation that everyone's in right now. It's like, okay, you know, if I'm a big ubiquity operator or ubiquity based operator, you know, and we think, well, maybe an AX platform's coming out, maybe a LTU is gone. Like I'm not going to put a whole lot of money into building, you know, new networks <laughs> on this, knowing that it could be obfuscated or sorry, um, EOL or, you know, just basically just ignored in the future. I don't want to drop a lot of money and I'd like to build my new networks now, but I'm like, well, and we're waiting on this next big thing coming around, and no one knows what it is. So there's a lot of a lot of thumb twiddling going on there, and I think it really kind of hurts the uh, the marketplace or the market. Excuse me. Uh, I don't know why marketplace is stuck in my head, but whatever. I'm shopping for too much shopping junk on Amazon. Facebook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> it's been all winter. I've just nothing done nothing all winter, but just shop for junk, waiting for spring to come out. Yeah, so, yeah. your Chinese goods. Yeah, exactly. I need some boxes of garbage here now to fill the hole. <laughs> uh, um, but no, it's just, you know, it just leads to the hesitation. Uh, now, on the flip side, you know, we've got Cam in, which is fantastic about saying, hey, here's our roadmap. Here's what it looks they like. They have one. Great. Yep. They have one. You know, <laughs> step one, excellent. Uh, you know, good good traction there. But again, the downside of that is like, cool, so here's our product development in 24 and 25. And it's like... Okay, I mean that's that's awesome. Like what's on there looks really fantastic. But if we've got to wait two or three years at this point, then you end up with that sort of analysis paralysis and the hesitation to say, hey, do I keep building what we know works now to carry yeah. us over, or do we wait? Uh, and I think you know, I'm the same as you. Like the longer you sit there and wait and don't build to fill a need in your customer base, don't get your your presence established there, um, then it just makes it one you less relevant, I guess, on the market side of things, but also too, like the competition's rolling, right? Like we know there's so much money coming into fiber and these other operators or these consolidation operators. There's another one, $200 million turn up outfit to start buying up operators and stuff. Like 
people are making moves. And if you're sitting on your thumbs waiting for the next big thing, it's going to pass you, you know, by. And it's not a relatively, yeah, it's just going to pass you by and you're going to find yourself, you know, obsolete to some extent. So, you know, building that brand, building that reputation locally, even if it's not the ideal way at the moment, it's, it's got to get done. I mean, nothing's ever ideal. Like, we would all love to have the magic bullet and sell the one thing. Tassos and I could sell one skew. Be like, we're done. Yeah. Right? This is awesome. But, yeah. you know, unfortunately, this is a less than optimal world we live in. So, luckily, though, again, KMM's done a really good job telling us what the status is, what's coming along. So, really pumped about that. Um, you know, we're looking to see where things go from there. Uh, again, the mimosa side of things. I mean, I mean, first of all, don't get me started up, there. I don't are, we, are we talking I, about them now? Well, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> I got nothing better to do right now, so... I mean, it's it's a slow death, you know, it's a slow death uh, for the past almost three years, right? Two plus years, um, you know, since since the kind of merging, so to speak, or whatever you want to call that acquisition with Airspan, nothing really has happened there. And, you know, again, there's a, there's a lot of hope and dreams, you know, from their fan base and their user base that actually something's going to happen. And I mean, I, I don't know how many, you know, you know how many trips they have to have, but I mean, you know, they 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 <laughs> they, they went to Airspan, they lost Quantena, now they're being bought by this huge, you know, uh, Wisp operator in India. You know, so I mean, I, I think they have way too many people there that they're not going to have enough chips for all the radios they'll need in that you know uh, operation. That we're not going to see much here in the U.S. You know, so that's 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 scary. That's scary to. You know, as an operator, I know there's people who built their networks based on Mimosa, but it's just like how many more, you know, uh, you know, things like this have to happen before you kind of maybe find a more secure vendor in this space, you know, and it's not, and it's not just about six gig, right? I mean, it's a whole nother conversation to have is like, hey, five gig is here, right? You know, so five gig still works, uh, you know, five gig is still a thing and, uh, you know, waiting you know, not building, you know, new networks because you're waiting for six gig is, yeah, I don't know that it's the best approach. I mean, I'm not a wisp, right? You're not a wisp. Uh, we deal with a lot of wisps and we talk to a lot of wisps. So maybe we're not the best ones to, you know, give advice in this, this area. But I mean, there's people out there who need internet now, right? And five gig works and five gig is a thing, you know, and, uh, you know, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know where to put the money on. But, uh, and I don't want to be a Cambium fanboy, right? But at the moment, when you look at the overall picture of things, like you said, the first box is checked. They actually have a roadmap, right? The second box is checked. They actually have beta hardware out there and testing that's working. Is it doing everything they said? No, but it's early, right? So, but at least that's, you know, a lot to be said for the, the first two things, you know? They're relevant. They're here. They talk to you. You know, if you say, hello, Canvium, I have a question. Canvium answers. That's the third box that I consider check, right? None of the uh -huh. other vendors in this space are really doing any any of that stuff right now. So, I mean, again, you know, it, it it's not, uh, you know, a, a one, one trick pony, right? Because that's the other problem with some of these solutions that are out there, like Tirana. We'll, we'll, we'll go there, trust me, you know? But, you know, there's not a one size fits all solution for delivering bandwidth to people, right? So I think that, you know, the, the hybrid network of not only fiber and wireless, but multiple types of wireless solutions in your network is, is a thing. You know, I mean, I think we have to think of hyper hybrid now right you know not uh -huh. only five gig and six gig and fiber and wireless and other things i mean really you have to use the best tool you know for the job to to deliver bandwidth and you know uh, not, not even cambium delivers all of that yet either right so i mean you know fi find those vendors but in the wireless space uh, i'll wrap up my little rant here uh you know in the wireless space right now cambium is is you know the, in in the front of the line right and hopefully they can deliver right and hopefully some other manufacturer maybe wakes up and you know comes to the party yeah definitely the most cohesive message and definitely saying we're in this market with you uh for the long haul we've been here for i mean forever right i mean ever yep. since uh, I was a wee lad doing this stuff, you know, it was Canopy and then the, you know, the whole platform is, is definitely growing and stuff for the years. And now, you know, there's definitely other manufacturers out there that are recently saying, hey, you guys are definitely a thing we're super interested in. Wink. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
that we've spoken about in the past. Uh, but you know, that's the message from that is not, Hey, we're with this market for a long haul. You know, it's, there's some, some live service given. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of this sort of stuff when, when you label yourself next generation as the most generic tag ever. And it's just, okay, oh, well, and the next generation. Yeah. <laughs> not good. <laughs> not great. But, all right, so, and of course, you know, the Toronto thing is the, the big, definitely the big unicorn uh, in the room, the the, the pink elephant or pink, pink unicorn in the room yeah, that we're talking it, about, too. Yeah. So. Mix it all together. Exactly. But, you know, again, where's all the Gen T stuff that was supposed to have already been here, you know, I don't know, last year or whatever that was? Where's, you know, oh, we definitely got 6 gig coming, but there's no real push or no real show there as to where it is. And, you know, it, it works, you know, we're not going to deny that, you know, we've had a lot of conversation with a lot of people and yeah, the, the platform works. All right. Great. You know, they've gone through some going pays I and mean, we all have like, some extent, right? I mean, we're, we're, no, no, no one's perfect, but at the same time, it's like, okay, here's an expensive solution that you are questioning the long-term viability of it. Uh, that is fed basically off investor money at this point. With yeah, focus on us now, but also could just disappear at some point. And even if you ignore all that, you've got a platform where most operators are looking at a two-year ROI, three-year ROI. You're being too nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So at that point, you know, you've really got to consider: is this what I want to do long term, or do I just kind of nut up and you know push a fiber solution? You know, and of course it depends on a hundred different factors. And again, there's so much segmentation into how you serve your customer base, like you just said. But I mean, dude, two or three year ROI. I mean, you could have glass on the ground over the year in a lot of different places, and you know, it, it definitely makes things simpler. And it also plays a lot into you know when you think long term about what are you doing with your WIS for now? You know, and your what's your two year plan, your five year plan, your ten year plan. Do you eventually want to build this up big and sell it? Then, you know, you've got to think about what your technology renewal costs and stuff are gonna be and and everything based on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean my my whole thing is is not really on the the radio. I mean it, it comes off that way sometimes, right? Uh it's just because of the way the way I act, you know. But like you said, we we know it does magical things. It does. And that's what at a very expensive hardware it gets you, right? So the non line of sight capabilities, the speeds that it delivers, I mean, uh, it's using multiple polarizations and that's how they achieve it. It's all it's all fine and great. But really we 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 need to see it from the the lower mechanics of how they operate as a company as well and who can afford it and who's actually using it and how well it's being used. It's really a lot of those things that really worry me and I'm, I'm, I'm worried about, you know, our WISPs, you know, basically the, the majority of, you know, WISPs uh, in, in North America, you know, whether they're going to get hurt by this potential investment in there. Because again, you know, it, you know, if you have government money, it's great because it's free money. You don't care, right? Uh, most WISPs, like 99% of WISPs don't have government funding and they're, they're self-funded, right? So it's a very expensive proposition, but you have to ask yourself, you know, you know, are they proven? No, right? I mean, they're, they're new to the market, right? You know, uh, do they support the WISPs in this market? I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I see people ask questions all the time. Hey, is there anybody from Toronto out here that can answer this question? You never hear them, right? So they're doing that, you know, ubiquity, you know, we don't exist, you know, let the other users help you kind of a thing. So where's that? There's real, you know, no delivery on the vision of their product. Like you said, G2 is supposed to be here. I mean, so what did they do? They, oh, we upgraded so you could run a wider channel and generate even more noise. Yay. You know, could, could yay, that's some <laughs> technology for you, right? So, I mean... That was just a, a quick, like, shut up kind of a thing feature to, you know, again, impress somebody. I don't know who, right? But, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, again, delivering on everything that they say. Because I, I believe when Wisps think, you know, of Tirana, they're, they're thinking of the big picture, right? You know, 600 meg at 8 miles at 9 line of sight at all these things. And you really... I don't see that, you know, 250 subscribers at the same time on one AP. This is what people think they're getting when they buy that. But when you actually talk to WISP, you see, I, I know WISP that are delivering eight miles, line of sight. You know, I know WISP that are delivering 500 meg 
at short distances, right? I know some WISPs that are self-funded, you know, but they're able to get a thousand dollar install fee. That's not all WISPs, you know? And of course, the ones with government money can do whatever. The, the biggest thing is also, you know, what if the customers don't come? What if you don't get the density you need for your two, one year, two year, three year ROI calculation? I mean, the presum data was the biggest thing that nobody's talking about that it was like a big like hello to me when it came out. You know, they, they tout 200 plus subscribers per AP, but the presum data uh, that came out in the report what, a few months ago showed that the average number of RNs on a single BN on a Toronto network is like 11. <laughs> it's like, so I can do that with Ubiquity too, right? I can do that with Cambium. I can do that even with Mimosa. Microtech can even do 11 subscribers on, on one BN. And if you're running an 80 or 100 plus megahertz channel, yeah, you can deliver eight, 900 meg. I mean, that's just simple math at 256 QAM or 1024 QAM. So again, uh, I... It's it's an overall big picture. Some people can make it work uh, in their business model. Some people are privately funded. Some people are funded by the government. There's there's a lot of things to really unpack here, and a much bigger discussion to have on you know whether it's you know a, it can work. And again, is it right for everywhere? Right. So it just doesn't scale in my book. Uh, and you know we'll, we'll just see. Again, I want to be wrong. Please prove me wrong. Right. Please drop your price, bring the price down so more people can afford it, continue to do the things that you say uh, can be done all at the same time, not just pick one or two, right? You know, we can give you distance or we can give you speed. We can give you speed or we can give you not line of sight. You know, we can give you cost effective or we can give you speed and distance. I don't know. Um, you know, they, they talk about all the things that it can do and I just don't see it all happening right now. And I, I would love, I would love for a wish because I'd asked this before in public and nobody ever delivers, right? I would like to see, you know, this 200 subscribers delivering gigabit to everybody like they yeah. say it can and nobody's done it so far. Nobody's shown it. I've seen people like with four or five subs saying, yeah, I'm getting 500 meg. All right, well, great. You know, good for you. You know, so your ROI is now 12 years. Okay, congrats. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Nah, all right, I'll stop. Next, next, next. No, subject. no, no. We'll just keep getting on. Now, <laughs> and of course, to be clear, you know, we're not really coming this from. This is not RF elements as an Antonio manufacturer's no, perspective. No, this is just this in is general. Tosses no, in mind the market as a whole. Because I mean, we've been doing this forever. Honestly, we're getting old enough to the point where we're probably not going to be able to do anything else at this point. Yeah. So it's important to us that this market continues to run. Because uh, if you try to put me in a suit somewhere, I think I'd literally die. So never happened. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we need solutions. We need solutions that are good for the market, that are cost effective for this particular market. Again, the the wireless ISP arena is a cost conscious, you know, and still performance driven segment. And uh, we require those types of solutions. So this is not a knock on any one manufacturer. Again, we knock on all of them. And uh, when they do good things, we talk about it. And when they don't do good things, we, we talk about it. We care. We really care about the, uh, the wisps in this space for sure. For sure. And, you know, I think it's a telling thing, too, is, like, you see a lot of the, the marketing documentation that comes out from them. Okay, we're 200 WISP, and, you know, we've got a uh, thousand, whatever many thousands of base nodes sold, and we cover 20 million population based on, like, a distance and a population center map or whatever, and that's all I'm good. But they never really say, and we also cover 50,000 subs or 75 or 100 yeah. or 500,000 or whatever it is, right? Funny how that is, right? Real funny. So now, if the next one comes out, they're like, yeah, we've got, I don't know, however many thousand base nodes, or we're covering 500,000 subscriber lines. And it's like, okay, well, maybe we'll shut the fuck up a little bit because. <laughs> no, we, we won't. We won't. Well, we'll we shout won't, but... from the rooftops, right? We'll tell everybody. It's like, finally. Yeah. Well, then that'll be like, hey, it's, it's cracking, man. It's rolling. Yeah. And if that's what the industry needs, then, or the industry needs to adjust to, then maybe that's the path it goes, you know, long term. So. I mean, we've definitely seen it shift in advance and go in ways we never expected, or at least I never expected. Um, but at the same time, you know, I mean, we could be entirely wrong as to where we think it's going to go now. But I think with the current status quo, where we're waiting on a hope and a dream, uh, a, you know, a mystery hardware thing like the financials, the physics, uh, the timelines and stuff aren't really to the point where it matters. And even if we do get a golden bullet and it's too yeah, you know, by the time everything's done, it's two, three, five years from now. By the time these big networks get built, you know, at the same time, the fiber crews 
are just running full bore everywhere. Anywhere you turn around, there's stuff turning up. So, you know, the yeah. the biggest benefit our industry has always had has been flexibility. To be able to deploy where others can't, to deploy quickly, to run clean. And if you're not doing those sort of things now, again, sitting stable, waiting for the next big thing, then, you know, you're going to get outclassed and outrun. Yeah, yeah. And there's, and, you know, again, you know, five gigahertz right now is a, a viable thing. You know, it's working. And there are lots of wisps out there who aren't, you know, waiting. You know, they're, they're looking at the future. Yeah, but they're still moving ahead with what they have right now, right? Five gigahertz uh, still works, you know, uh, testing six gigahertz on the side, but they're not, they're not uh, putting all their kind of new growth and new deployments on, on the back burner. I mean, honestly, a lot of the solutions out there, you know, outside of Toronto, right, which is like everybody else are still kind of cost effective, right? So, um, you know, you can, you can do a, a five gig solution and kind of upgrade to six gig if you need it. I mean, quite frankly, you know, six gig isn't necessarily the answer. I mean, if five gig works, it works. You're delivering what you need. Six gig doesn't it doesn't necessarily get you more speed, right? I mean, yes, it is AX, it's a higher modulation rate, but in most cases, people are not gonna use that higher modulation rate because the distances are gonna be much shorter, right? So I think when six gigahertz comes out or AX comes out, I mean, most people will be stuck at 256 or 1024 qualm anyway, five gig does that now, right? You, you, don't, you don't need that stuff. Uh, you know, most people are running 40 megahertz channels. I think the presim data shows that 20 megahertz is still pretty much a very common thing. So you can double your speeds by going to 40 megahertz and you could quadruple your speeds by going to 80 megahertz now, right? So um, if you have, uh, you know, uh, growth needs, you can do it. If you can't run a 40 or an 80 now in 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 five gig you're not going to do it necessarily in six either because i mean we've seen some of the preliminary six gig spectrum and it's it's not as clean as you know people think it's all virgin ground it's i mean people are destroying <laughs> already you know with uh, their testing licenses and stuff like that so i mean yeah, yeah. or it's or it's green and clear for a minute yeah and yeah, then, like exactly. you know a month down the road it's going to get thrashed out to you exactly um, yeah. you know so we're, we're there's a lot of that sort of bad behavior being done so and you know, for us, it is a bit of self-serving. We'd be like, stick on five, upgrade your stuff. You know, obviously, you know, we, we do the horns and everything too. But, you know, there's a lot of people right now that we deal with that are doing that sort of thing. They're like, look, we've got these existing networks. Even if they're not doing a lot of greenfield stuff now, there are opportunities to go through and refresh and update some of your existing networks, right? So, you know, all those sector networks and rural areas that were built out five, ten years ago, you know, you can upgrade the radios, you can upgrade the horns, add a few more APs for capacity. I mean, that's working really well for a lot of folks. Um, yeah. When the AX 5 gig stuff comes with the compatibility of the 4500 series, I think there's going to be a lot of cool stuff happening there, too. You know, yeah, 5 gig is going to be noisier, but the base protocols are going to be able to handle it a lot better. That we, we've talked about that before. Also, your power levels are a lot higher. You know, you're capped at 30 to 36, depending on application of 6 gig, where you're 36 to the AP and unlimited the CPE and 5 gig, which means you can put a big dish on there, run those longer distance, get those higher order modulation rates, and really stretch that out. Because, you know, this dream, like you said, you know, these 1024, 496 quantum networks, 10x, 12x radios, you know, the, their network sounds great if you're at half a mile, three, you know, or mile, two, whenever that may be done. And at that right. point, if you've got the density and build and you're waiting to do that, I mean, honestly, a lot of these can be done with existing 60 gig solutions that are out there now and be done reasonably with stuff that exists and you can use. So, and where the noise is not necessarily an issue too. So. You know, there's there's a lot of waiting, and I think a lot of places where you just again be better focused on building now, and you know, updating or or you know, building even further when this new stuff does come out, and you can roll with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's I mean, there's still a lot of wisps out there that are uh, I see on their websites, I mean, offering like one, two, five meg packages and stuff like that, right? So I mean, they could turn around and be hundred plus meg uh, tomorrow with five gig now right uh running 1024 qualm now you know uh or with the 5 gig ax stuff you know you know basically 5 gig ax to me is better than 6 gig ax uh, essentially if you're running the, the the right setup because it's all the same speeds and functionalities essentially it's just you know again you know if if you're lucky enough that 6 gig is clean in your area you know 
confined. And, and you know, there's this huge, there's a huge unknown here, right? Is how the AFC in six gig is going to work. Like what happens when you become, uh, you know, uh, start interfering with an incumbent six gig backhaul? I mean, does your system just shut down? I mean, you know, you're not seeing that in the testing because the AFC is not really working, right? But I mean, there's, there's a lot of unknowns. I would, I would hate to see people build out these six gig networks and all of a sudden they're getting shut down constantly, kind of like what DFS does, right? So DFS is still available, but nobody really runs in it because they're worried, right? That uh, a radar or something is going to shut down their AP and, you know, six gig might be the same. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. And there'll probably be a little bit of ways around it. Like, hopefully it's not nearly the shit show that the CBRS SAS has been the last few months. It's oh my God. Absolute don't chaos. Even, don't even... Right. Can we go there? Can we I go sure. There? Well, I, I mean, mean, what the hell, dude? I mean, I, that actually kind of plays to uh, what we're saying. CBRS was supposed to be, oh man, this is going to be the end all save all for WIS, right? Because we're going to no. get all the space. If we're first ones there, we're going to get all this you know clean spectrum and stuff to use. And what happened? One, uh, I got noisy as shit in like the first six months, right? Because again, there's no GAA coordination or protection. All the the co-coordination and help that was supposed to have been done, you know, wink, wink, none of that's done anything. Um, yeah. It's got a hard enough time keeping the system running where it just doesn't, I don't know, drop all your APs offline for a few hours. And then when they come back, everything is scrambled channels. Like, it's a bit of a mess, right? And again, yeah, yeah. you know, it did give the benefit to, to get some more foliage penetration and stuff like that. And that's great. Not downplaying that aspect whatsoever. And the power levels were good. But at the same time, this was the 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 golden bullet and you know now people have gotten really sort of like you know i'm worried the wimax golden bullet i mean come on you remember that 70 megs <laughs> yeah. at 70 miles baby and there was a <laughs> lot of money spent on wimax stuff and none of it done i mean we went through it again with the lte solutions i mean look yeah. at everything that was promised with these trimmed down whisper eddie lte solutions you know what uh it's a big fart in the face so I'm def I'm definitely worried. I mean, I have I actually uh, am very positive about CBRS as far as the spectrum goes. That's all great. What I'm worried about, what I'm seeing is a lot of Wisps are building their packages and selling their service packages based on acquiring the full GAA spectrum for themselves, right? So because nobody's out there right now, so they're able to run a 40 megahertz. Uh, GAA plus whatever their pal is, right? And actually, a lot of these guys out there, uh, I don't some some of the platforms I don't believe are really participating in the SaaS right now, right? So they're running a full 40 megahertz in the pal and a full 40 in the GAA. So they get 80 megahertz of spectrum. They calculate we can deliver 600 meg. But once you know everybody starts coming online and more uh, more CVRS uh, wisps come online. That GAA is going to start getting trimmed down. And then what happens when you don't have enough spectrum to offer the speed packages you're you're delivering now? So that's really, I don't think people are looking at that uh, close enough. And they're, they're you know, putting that with the cart before the horse or whatever, right? And, and saying, well, hey, you know, if I do a 40 and a 40, I can deliver 800 meg total. And therefore, I can sell 300 meg packages. And that's just not going to hold up, unfortunately. So, um, yeah. Well, we'll see where that goes. That's 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 the biggest flaw I see with CBRS right now. What I see operators doing, and it's it's really worrying me. It's really worrying me. So we'll we'll see we'll see where that goes. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite problem of the people still selling five meg plans out there. It's like they're they're yeah. promising too much. So, and the five meg guys, like I'm not trashing anyone in particular, but no. that always kind of cheeses me at times. Like I get you doing what you can, but. You know, if you look at the biggest proponents of, well, you're spending other people's money, it's not fair to everything else. And then you kind of look at what their networks are offering. I'm like, dude, like, I get that you're on a shoestring, but like, you know, you could probably spend a few more bucks to get this thing into this century, right? So, yeah. you know, that, that kind of cheeses me at times too, because it's the same thing. Like, we still see people out there with rockets that are like M series or, you know, AC platforms on like Omnis or 120 degree sectors, they get wiped out after 10 subs and it's completely trash, right? And they're like, well, you know, we can't do anymore without other people's money. I'm like, well, no, you can. There's so many self-funded successful operations or getting, you know, traditional styles of funding. So, you know, the credit market's dried up a little bit, but there's still a lot of money out there available 
where you can get the funding and not have to necessarily rely on the good book to come save you, but you know, reasonable businesses with reasonable business practices. So like it's, it still exists. It'll never go away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just like anything else in any business you have to adapt for the time. Right. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I take a five make package over an old internet. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's still a thing. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it really doesn't cost that much money to get them into at least 20 plus, right? I think that that should be, what's the what's the minimum now? 25 by three or something like that, which used to the be broadband out. Yeah. Yeah. And and honestly, 25 by five or whatever it is, is, is pretty decent. You know, I mean, we know that the average household only uses seven megs, right? So uh, again, you know, a, a 25 by five is not very difficult to achieve. And uh, I mean, you could do that all day long with AC hardware, which is not expensive, right? So, um, you know, just a few things need to change there. I mean, mainly it's, uh, it's the, uh, antenna, right. You know, get off the omnis. I know there's some low density stuff, but put up four nineties at least. I mean, even if you have to use sectors, right. I mean, at a minimum, I believe, you know, four ninety degree sectors with, uh, you know, any decent AC based radio out there and you can deliver 25 meg, uh, plans at least at, at a, at a minimum. Right. Uh, so. Yeah. So. I don't know. This has definitely been the uh, old Ben ranting, shaking her fist at the sky segment. Uh, what else are we complaining about? Oh, my knees hurt and uh, they pop when I stand up. But I did. I didn't drop an f bomb this time, so that's good. Yeah, I was actually yeah. surprised. I either I either need none or you need to lead into it. So, but um, <laughs> but anyways, otherwise, you know, that's sort of the main feeling. Again, we're, we're you know we kind of covered this stuff in the past, but again. You know, I think a lot of what we're saying here really just kind of encompasses the feeling and, you know, what we came out of the show as. Everyone's like, yeah, we're really excited about the future, but no one's yeah. doing anything now. So, um, you know, it's like everything else. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose all this weight. I'm going to exercise and I'm going to eat. But then you don't actually do it. But you're like, man, in a year from now, I'm going to be hot. But you don't actually do it. You spend all your time researching, but you don't even try to do the things you know. Like, hey, walk a little bit, right? Eat a little bit less. You know, eat less junk food and a little bit better food, right? So there's things you know you can do now uh, to to achieve your goals, but uh, you just want to sit there and wait for the next best, you know, weight loss drug. That was a, actually a really good analogy and something that I can I can resonate. See, I'm wearing I'm wearing my workout shirt today. I'm going to go to the gym. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I'm I'm being a giant hypocrite here, 100 percent too. So at no point should anyone actually oh. listen to what I say about that. You, you go, you walk every day. <laughs> And yeah. you walk every day, right? You get your steps and you're doing something positive, right? Uh, to try and keep yourself healthy. Nobody says that, you know, you're going to maybe lose a ton of weight, but you're doing something. You're not waiting, you know, for the next commercial from Big Pharma to say, hey, this drug, stick it in your arm and you're going to lose 100 pounds, right? You're doing something. So, yeah. It's the rest of the day. That's the issue. So, <laughs> the nights for some reason. I don't know. But anyways. <laughs> But uh, but other than that, like I said, the show was good. Um, we only lost one man down for a little while, but he bounced back. So um, did drink quite a bit of bourbon again, which my wife was concerned. She's like, I don't know how I feel about sending you to where bourbon is it born. Is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it definitely. I was like, I was like three steps to the airport, and I looked around. I'm like, I think they're kind of proud of it here because there's a bourbon side every twenty feet in there. But um, yeah. Facility was really nice. I really liked the facility. Um, it was really Definitely. convenient with the hotel and stuff. The there, hotel was so. awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Uh, really cool space. So, even, yeah. even the food and stuff like that uh, uh, wasn't bad at all. So really, I mean, again, Wispa put on a, a really good show for Wisp America. I was quite pleased with uh, the overall everything about it. You know, even even the town, right? I mean, there's there was stuff to go and do around uh, the the show as well, not just captive within the hotel although uh, the marriott right there's two options i don't think the hyatt was as as good let's say most people hung out at the marriott but whatever i mean it was it was it was fantastic good food there uh good bar good social life uh, a lot of people again after the show uh got together and hung out and talked wisp stuff and so so all that stuff was accomplished as well we raised a lot of awareness for johnny's tailgate uh and then <laughs> we hope for the tailgate in the future and that one day we can all live in a home where we have tailgates without giant holes in them. So, Johnny, exactly. we're thinking about exactly. you, brother. We're thinking about you. So, <laughs> anyways, all right. I think that about covers it for now. We can go ahead and wrap this show up. So, um, 
We will be doing more podcasts. We have been a little lax uh, in our podcast. We've been working on some internal projects, just been slammed and everything else. But we are we are getting back on track here. We apologize for those. We get, I did get beat up a little bit at the show. They're like, "What have you guys been doing?" We're like, "We've been doing stuff. I promise, just not here." <laughs> but we're going to get back to it. We're going to get some guests here shortly. So if you're interested in being a guest, uh, you want to talk about your perspective, especially with how this is playing. You know, we we've covered a lot of different topics with guests because everyone has their own thing. But you know, if you've got an interesting perspective, you want to talk about analysis paralysis or diversifying your network bills for the future things like that specifically or or you know if you're using a lot of toronto and it's working great for you and it scales and you're happy with it hey we'd love to talk to you you know again give us that information we're more than happy to talk about it so yep uh toss is anyone looking for us where all can they find us on various platforms and such yeah you can find us all over social media on facebook and instagram you could find us on our for- forum, rfelab.com. You could always contact us through our website, rfelements.com, or just uh, right here on YouTube or wherever you download uh, your podcasts and stuff, you can comment uh, online there. All right, all right. So until you, we talk to you guys next time, we're going to go sit in our rocking chairs and shake our hands at the sky. So I feel like drinking some bourbon right now. <laughs> that's, that's all good. Yeah, so. Bye, everybody. All right, yeah. bye. Y'all be good. Bye. See you.